Now, diplomacy uh, has had some significant accomplishments on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, the 1994 nuclear deal, while not ideal in all respects, uh, has prevented Pyongyang uh, from acquiring what today could be a nuclear arsenal of 25, 30 nuclear weapons, perhaps more. Deterrence and missile defense are also important, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, but by themselves, they will not prevent Pyongyang from continuing to produce and sell these missiles around the world, something that's clearly not in the U.S. interest. The Clinton administration's objective was to create a process, to create a dialogue with the North. The purpose of this process diplomacy was to, in essence, maintain stability on the continent, to manage the periodic flare-ups and the vagaries of the communist dictatorship in the North, and to bolster the credibility of the South Korean government, which is also uh, a government that has a process-oriented foreign policy. Regardless of the objective, the results of process diplomacy are clear. On the one hand, the continent has been relatively stable. No single flare-up since 94, since 93, threatened the basic security on the peninsula or the armistice. On the other hand, the DPRK is still there. And the Bush administration has been handed a situation that is markedly worse in many respects from the one inherited by President Clinton. North Korea clearly has not shelved its nuclear ambitions. North Korea continues trying to acquire dual-use technology with clear nuclear applications. Moreover, during the past decade, the North has become a major supplier of ballistic missile technology and even complete missiles. My point is this, while the Korean Peninsula has been relatively stable under U.S. process diplomacy, it's by no means a safer place after the past two Clinton administrations. The fact is, though, that North Korea has no international commitments not to sell missiles, and their missile exports are a very important part of their hard currency earnings. It seems to me it's very unlikely that North Korea will stop selling missiles unless it gets something tangible in return. If on the other hand, Washington is perceived as a source of increased tension on the peninsula because all it wants to do is contain and isolate North Korea. If all it does is adopt a solely military approach to the North, uh, it'll be very difficult, I think, to win the support of not only the South Korean government, but especially the South Korean people. Uh, the result of that scenario could be a weakening of deterrence on the peninsula and a loss of influence for the United States in the region. There are significant tensions between hawks and doves in Pyongyang over whether it is possible for North Korea to establish normal relations with the United States and whether it is desirable for North Korea to open up to South Korea. Kim Jong-il and his inner circle are the doves. They took big domestic political risks by going ahead with the North-South Summit and by sending Vice Marshal Jim yong rak to Washington last October. Clinton's decision not to go to Pyongyang was a major embarrassment for Kim Jong-il, and I think a setback to American objectives. Now the shift in Washington back to the type of U.S. policy that predated Clinton has sharply limited uh, Kim Jong-il's uh, freedom of action. I believe that we're going into a very dangerous period reminiscent in some ways of the months leading up to the nuclear crisis of 1994. And I think the way to go forward is to really uh, offer a combination of containment uh, and engagement, uh, just as the United States uh, did so successfully against the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Engagement alone uh, would emasculate our diplomacy and would strike many observers as naive given the very serious threats that the North Korean regime poses to ourselves and our allies. Containment by itself would alienate some of our key allies in the region and would actually um, do little to reduce uh, much of the North's military threat. The best place to start, the, the easiest deal that's out there is on missile exports. Uh, a deal to ban North Korean missile exports is a relatively straightforward transaction. In fact, the North has already offered uh, last year 
uh, to impose a total ban on all missiles and missile-related exports, uh, including their existing contracts, in exchange for in-kind compensation, type and amount to be determined. Now, from the U.S. perspective, such a total ban would be easier, it seems to me, to monitor and verify over time than constraints on the North's indigenous missile program, and it would have tremendous value in terms of limiting further missile development, especially in the Middle East, where most of North Korea's customers are. Not just the United States, but also Russia, China, Europe, and Japan must persuade North Korea to reach a verifiable agreement to end its long-range missile production and its sale of such missile materials or technology in return for reasonable international assistance. I would suggest that this is one area where we have a confluence of interest, every one of the nations mentioned. It's very much in their interest, I would argue, for North Korea not to develop a third stage of a missile. Obviously, to get an agreement, both sides are going to need to make compromises. We'll need to define, I think, more clearly what we're prepared to offer North Korea in exchange for steps to meet our concerns, and we'll need to negotiate some kind of sequence of steps that both sides can take uh, simultaneously, rather than to expect one side to demonstrate its sincerity first and only then have the other side um, take reciprocal action. President Bush started out by making Korea policy with an eye on his Republican right wing, in my view. Then he recognized that South Korea had to be considered and he shifted course. Now I hope he will recognize that Pyongyang too has its domestic political conflicts and that what we do will shape the outcome of these conflicts with significant consequences for American interests, not only in Korea but in Northeast Asia as a whole. I think the administration's decision to resume talks with the North is a good first step, and I think with a lot of hard work and hard bargaining, it's possible to get additional agreements uh, beyond the current freeze on North Korea's plutonium production and long-range missile tests. Now, of course, one can't be certain that this diplomacy will succeed or that the North Koreans will live up to the agreements they make. And for that reason, it's obviously very important that the U.S. continue to maintain and strengthen uh, its defense and its alliance with South Korea and Japan, both as an alternative to negotiations if they collapse and as a reinforcement to the diplomatic track. I think the two go together.